Hello, and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to use the mesh current method to solve this circuit on the board, which is a little more complicated than uh, most because we have actually three sources in the problem. We've got 230 volts, 115 volts, 460 volts, and of course, resistor network all around. And um, what we're asked to do is what is the power delivered by each one of these sources? So what we're basically going to do is figure out um, the currents flowing in each leg here through these sources and then we're going to go calculate what is the actual power you know that's being supplied delivered or whatever by these different sources so I think you would agree this would be very difficult to solve by you know regular old Kirchhoff's laws or whatever I mean anything can be done but it just there the nice thing about mesh current and node voltage methods is that they're rigid they're rock solid and they're um, so there's a recipe you follow to how you do them the first step of the recipe is to identify your meshes. Well, this is almost looks like the last problem. So we have a mesh here, a mesh here, and a mesh here. And so those are gonna be our meshes. So you need to go and write your mesh currents here. So this is mesh current I sub A. I like to choose the top one as I sub B, but it really doesn't matter. And then this one is I sub C. All right, and so that is how we do this. And I'll take a second just to kind of reiterate something I've talked about before when we did node voltage. Um, these techniques that you're learning for mesh current and also for node voltage that we've studied before are so important because right now we're only dealing with resistors and we're also only dealing with these constant voltage sources that don't change. It's a constant 230 volts for instance. But in a, in a little bit, okay, in the future, we're going to change these sources to be sine waves that alternate with time. Okay, And we're also going to introduce capacitors and inductors and other circuit elements mixed in with the resistors. All right, And we'll be doing this analysis to figure out what's going to happen when you have all these sources up and down, you know, alternating like a sine wave. And then you've also got capacitors and inductors which don't behave exactly like resistors. We'll explain it all later. What you're going to learn is that once you understand mesh current and node voltage, all you really do is you make a sort of a modification to how you write the equations and then you can solve those systems just as easily. So really make sure you understand what we're doing here, especially with the sign conventions, how we're writing the equations. Don't flush this knowledge because once we get to capacitors and inductors, it's going to be the same methods. That's why I'm spending so much time on these methods because they're so core and fundamental to everything we do. All right, so let's go and get, get busy here. So let's look at mesh A, which is this one here. And I am going to just start in this corner, going through the source, through the 1 ohm, through the 2 ohm, through the source, back through the 4 ohm. All right, so let's go here. I'm traveling through from negative to positive, so that's going to be a negative 230. That's, we always treat voltages negative if we go from negative to positive. All right, now when we get to the 1 ohm resistor, we're bordering these two meshes. We want to assume we have a voltage drop from positive to negative, so I can write a plus in my equation, so I'm gonna do that. If I make that assumption, that means the current must flow in the direction that I'm walking around the circuit this way. So that means it must be IA, but minus IB, which is fighting it. So it's IA minus IB, which is fighting it. That's gonna give me the net current flowing this way through the resistor. Then I multiply by one, this is I times R. That gives me this voltage drop across the one ohm resistor in that direction. Okay, so then I get to the two ohm resistor. Again, I want to assume I have a voltage drop here. So that means I need to assume I have a current flowing down through this resistor, which means it needs to be IA. IA would be flowing down 